God and defend my cause against the ungodly people and deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art God of my strength, for I have suffered for me, for I have suffered for the enemy of trusting me. For set out my light on thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me to the holy hill unto thy dwelling. And then they go and the altar of God, even unto God of my joy and gladness, and upon the heart of my defense of the beat of God and my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? O oh, for thy trusting God, for I will be at him in the ice which is set off of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, the Lord of God. I'll go unto the altar of God. Even unto God, my joy and gladness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We have the name of heaven and earth. I confess, Almighty God, to bless Mary, ever virgin, to bless Michael the Archangel, to bless John Baptist, to the holy apostles Peter and Paul, all the saints and my brethren, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I beg, blessed Mary, ever virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John Baptist, the Holy Apostle, Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and thee, my brethren, to pray for thee, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon me, forgive me thy sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. I confess, Almighty God, to bless Mary, ever virgin, to bless Michael the Archangel, to bless John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, to all the saints and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I beg, blessed Mary, ever virgin, blessed Michael the Archangel, blessed John the Baptist, the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, all the angels and saints, and thee, Father, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon me, forgive me thy sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. By the mercy of the Lord, grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Will that I turn again and quicken us, O God? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord. And grant us thy salvation. Lord, hear my prayer. And let my heart come unto thee. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. We perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, To what then shall I compare the men of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, We piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you said he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Great indeed is the mystery of our religion. The words of my mouth, meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in the name of the Father and Son and of the Holy Ghost. If you visit this parish or other traditional parishes, I always point out to folks who might be visiting that this day that we have the penitential colors up is a day of our Catholic history. It is a day of traditional fasting, three days quarterly, those ember days. Ember days are something that we have lost and they just kind of went away. Nobody ever said, don't do them anymore. They just went, well, when you promulgate a document that says, well, we'll leave the celebration of Ember Days up to the local bishop. Uh, Hey, what happened? Doesn't seem like a whole lot of local bishops want to celebrate the Ember Days. It doesn't, we don't even have the Ember Days in the new Missal, or the Roman Missal, because when we look at that Missal, we are to, it says, we are to use days of, of, various and sundry necessities of the church. The various and sundry necessities never outweigh the primary necessity of our church, and that is fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. This is what the Ember Days were ever for, was fasting and praying. We should be praying all the time. I always point out prayer is the life breath of our faith. We have to pray. We have to pray a lot. But Jesus Christ himself tells us that praying is not always enough, particularly when there is something tremendously important afoot. Our Lord was lamenting over his disciples' inability to cast a demon out of a child one time. They asked, why, Lord, why couldn't we cast them out? And he said, these only come out by prayer and fasting. This is why fasting has ever been a part, and I wouldn't say a part, part and parcel of the life of faith. It is just something that is of a necessity. And if it's such a necessity, how come it is always so mitigated? Oh, you don't have to fast this much anymore. You don't have to fast on these days anymore. Well, this is an option now. Why do we think for one moment that we're dealing with what we're dealing with in the church right now when we look at her practices or lack thereof. The lack of fasting in conjunction with our prayer is something that should, for anyone who knows the faith, anyone who has just an inkling of traditional Catholicism, they'd be able to point a blind man could see it. This is what we have to understand about our faith and the necessity of these days that the church has always held, these ember days. Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, quarterly, to appreciate the fact of the necessity of prayer. One of the reasons one of the popes gave for the necessity of the Ember Days throughout the year is to make fasting a part and to make fasting a part of every season of the year. Because what do we have? We have Lent and we have Advent, and yes, Advent is a time of fasting. In prayer, it is not a time of joyful anticipation. It has always been a time of fasting. So you had Lent, you had the little Lent of Advent, and then the church said, we need to let the faithful know that fasting and prayer are part and parcel of 
our life all the time. So three days, every quarter, we're going to fast and pray. And the rationale for the fast and pray could be held to regional considerations, but it was always, always looked upon as a time for fasting and prayer for those about to be ordained to ministry, deacons and priests. Ordinations often happen, regularly happen, during the ember days, because we should understand that every time that we are blessed, and if you look at the ember days, they are seasonal, we have the blessings also of the field. But when the Lord blesses, whether it be agriculturally or spiritually, particularly in the provision of priests, that we may have the Eucharist, that we may have our confessions heard. When we understand that and the necessity of fasting about such grave issues, again, why would we even think, uh, or qu I should say even question, why what's going on in our day is going on? There's no fasting and praying going on. And when I say no, I don't mean everybody, but I mean generally speaking in the way it's presented, the, the lack of necessity behind prayer, fasting, and also works of corporal penance and corporal mercy that amplify prayer, that make prayer more effective. God hears prayer. We live a mysterious life. That life where we have one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. This life that we don't have, we're going to heaven after we die. St. Paul says, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you are seated, present tense, with Christ in the heavenlies. We are there already, just not in fullness, the already not yet motif. We live a mysterious religion, like that first reading says today, the Holy Spirit speaking through St. Paul says, great indeed is the mystery of our religion. What a deep mystery it is to understand that we serve the mystical body of Christ. And that is what the Catholic Church is. The Catholic Church is not the communion of the faithful. That is not what it is. It is the mystical body of Christ. And the parts of the body, the faithful, under that head that is Jesus Christ, when we pray and when we work, we should work hard and effectually and that is praying fasting corporal works of mercy corporal works of penance we are the household of god nothing less in this world it is supposed to be manifest like that to the world it's not supposed to be made to look like them so they get comfortable and come in here our message is supposed to make them uncomfortable about their present situation so that we'll come in here and change that situation. It is direct. It is confrontational. We are the household of God. We are the household of God, which is the church of the living God, as St. Paul says. The pillar and bulwark of the truth. This is First Timothy chapter 3. I always like referring to this one because your Protestant friends will like to tell you about Scripture alone and all these alones that they have. And you know, I always love when they talk about Scripture alone. Second Timothy 3.16 says that all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for raising up and correction and reproof, which is absolutely true. But when you ask them, but what is the pillar and bulwark of your faith? Scripture, that's not what the scriptures say is the pillar and bulwark of your faith. Scripture says that the church is the pillar and bulwark of your faith. The church, the mystical body of Christ, the household of the living God that's in this world, this visible institution that is hierarchical, this visible institution that has been set up the only institution on the face of this planet, the only governing structure that didn't start from the grassroots up. Hey, we're all together. Let's choose a king. Let's, it's always top down for us. God, his vicar in this world, the pope, bishops, priests, deacons, 
the faithful. The faithful are supposed to be nurtured and equipped for the work of the ministry by the church. They are not supposed to dictate what they need. That was one of the things that also happened with the Ember Days. Not only are the local council bishops supposed to take charge and implement them at their, but they're supposed to do so because of the needs of the faithful. You know what the faithful need? The faithful need to pray and fast. The faithful need to be taught that they need to pray and fast and to do corporal works of mercy and corporal works of penance to make their prayers efficacious before God. The apostles that were called by our Lord Jesus Christ could not cast out a demon, just a demon. They couldn't do it with just their prayers and they were apostles, capital A. They couldn't do it with their prayers. What makes us think that our prayers are going to do any kind of decent work in this world if they are not amplified by those things that let our Lord know that we take them for real, that they are objective for us, they are just not subjective words and asking Him for things, but that we will actually put ourselves out, make ourselves uncomfortable, deprive ourselves of things in this world. Fasting is just not relegating your dietary intake. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. But fasting is depriving yourself of all the allurements of this world. Those things that we like, those comfortable things that we see and live every day. We ought to let our Lord, we don't need these things. And as, as a matter of fact, these things are actually a detriment to our prayers. These are the ember days. These are the Ember Days, and I said, particularly focused on bringing up men for the ministry. Good men. Good men that will be stalwarts for the faith. Good, good men that will not knuckle under to or acquiesce to what the faithful may dictate to them. Because they should know better. Priests should know better than the faithful. That's why they're priests. The gospel tonight. Is it, our Lord, he ties up that you know, example that he gives. What are the men like? Of the, the men of this generation are like children. Like little children who banter back and forth about this, that, or the other thing. That's what the men are like in this generation. And this was when our Lord Jesus Christ lived. How much more can we answer that question? What, how, what will I compare the men of this generation? They are like children. They stomp their feet when they don't get what they want. They think that they know better than everybody else. That's the men of our generation. Our Lord says, we can't be fickle about things. Look what you said about John the Baptist. He came, he didn't, he fasted and was a teetotaler, and you said he had a demon. I come, I drink wine, and I eat, and you say that I'm a friend of tax collectors and sinners. You're fickle, you're blown about by your own whims and wills. But he says, yet wisdom is justified by all her children. That does not mean numerically. It means the quality of the children. The Old Testament says that wise children, what is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Wise children are an honor to their parents. God our Father is honored by children in this world who are faithful to his deposit of faith. The scriptures, the traditions of the church, and the continual magisterial teaching of the church. That is what justifies in this world. That is wisdom, the quality of the church's children. The quality is lacking in our day. We can fix that. Well, how can I do about anything? You can pray, and that sounds so Pollyannish, and it is if that's all you do. If you all, all you do is ask God to do things for the church, and you don't prove to him that you truly want it by fasting and corporal works of penance and corporal works of mercy, all is for naught. Ember days, appreciate them quarterly. 
particularly in the context of men who are going to be called to the diaconate and priesthood or to those men and women who are called to the religious life. They are the church. They are the bulwark and the pillar of our faith. Those who pray and fast and do corporal works of mercy and penance for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. sacrifice of the Mass is offered this evening with specific intention for Our Lady's intercession of the life of her servant, Chris. Pray for him, O Holy Mother of God, that he may be made worthy of the promises of Christ, and the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Pray, brethren, that this, my sacrifice, and yours, may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, for the praise and glory of his name. Grandmother, we pray thee that this oblation may in such wise cleanse us from all our sins, that we thy servants, being sanctified both in body and soul, may worthily offer unto thee this sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
evermore praising thee and saying. Mi modo posquem chanadum est, acipiens en hub praeclarum calicem et sanctus ac revervidus manus suas, item tibi gatias agens, benedixit, didique discipulis suis dicens, acipite et vivite ex eo omnes, hic est enim calic sanguinis me. Novi et eterni testamenti, qui probobis et promulgis, et fudetur in rationum peccatorum, ho facite in meum commemoratio.
the mystery of faith. Wherefore, O Lord, be thy servants and thy holy people, also remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, is also his resurrection from the dead in his glorious ascension into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Thou take look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them, even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, Almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angels on thine altar on high, beside thy divine majesty, that all we who have this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all the rest of Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing of light and of peace. To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, thou save the grounds of part of fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Anastasia, and with all thy saints within whose fellowship we beseech thee admit us, now weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom, O Lord, that is ever create all these good things, thou sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace.
Almighty ever living God, who most heartily thank thee, that thou hast passed these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body of the love of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. It does assure us thereby in thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we, our very members and forward to the physical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also fair to the hope of that everlasting kingdom, by the merits of your most precious death and passion, thy dear Son. We humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, and so assist us with thy grace. We may continue in that holy fellowship, and who also the word of God, and the prayer of Christ for all of us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the communion of the Holy Ghost, we all honor and glory. Lord, we help you. Let us pray. The Lord, who now suffered us to receive thy heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech thee that, like as thy mercy, we are enabled to vow to offer the same unto thee, so by thy goodness we may worthily receive them in our souls. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. The Mass is said in the part of peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The of the Holy Gospel according to St. John the Divine. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the man said, For God, his name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but said, Every witness of that light, that was the true light which lighteth every man that come into the world. In the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as men who received him, to them gave he power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and walked among us, and he beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. 